rather than me doing the call to worship on my own, I'm going to put it on the screen as usual, and we'll say it together as a body of God's people. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I understand some singers are going to sing to us as the deer packs all the water. You like that one, do you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and sing of building a house. Oh. 
Let's take a few moments, quiet in our minds, hearts, and before God, the time for prayer. Lord God and Heavenly Father, when we go through our weekly business, we are aware of how busy we can be. So busy that there are times where we have a communication with one another, but our mind have communication with you, Lord. We know that we can worship you at any time and in any place. The question is, do we? Father, forgive us for being so busy that we don't take time aside as often as we should. And so we take this time, this moment, to be quiet and to listen for you. Speak to us, O oh Lord, through your Holy Spirit that we may hear you, hear you in the words that we sing, hear you in the word that we have read, hear you in that word expounding, hear you in our hearts and minds. Lord, may we leave this place today determined to give you more space in our lives, Knowing that you forgive us for our shortcomings and our sins, no matter what form we may take. So we take this time and this space to say, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our shortcomings and sins, no matter what form we might take. But not only do we ask for forgiveness, we ask to feel the touch of your spirit and to know that we are forgiven and renewed so that when we leave this place and this space today, we go into all the world determined to shine the light of Christ in this very needy world of ours. We're thinking about you this morning, Lord. We're thinking about the world and those less fortunate than ourselves. And we do so not to make ourselves miserable, but to ask you to show us what we can do, no matter how small an effort it might seem, like a drop of water in a pond. Help us to remember that every action equals out to the glory of you. So blessed in our time together, Lord, might we continue to enjoy our coffee and our fellowship and our chapter. And above all, our praise of our God, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever to be clear. I think Doreen's going to read to us now from Psalm 22 and it's the verses 1 through my God, my God, don't have to abandon me. I have five days to be myself. Even today, I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. <laughs> I call at night, but get no rest. But you are in tune with the Holy One. The one who is here on the day. The ancestors to them trust in you. They trust in you and you take them. They call to you and escape from danger. They trust in you and they are not disappointed. But I am no longer a human being. I am a world. Despised and stolen by a villain. All who see me cheer at me. They stick their tongues and shake their heads. 
we will be relying on the Lord. We say, why doesn't he save me? If the Lord likes me, why doesn't he help me? It was you who brought me straight when he brought me. But when I was a baby, he kept me safe. But if you lie on me, the day I was born, and you have always been my God, do not stay away from me. Trouble is me, here, and there is no way to stop. Then the enemies surround me like food, they are all around me, like fish food from a man who passed up. They open their mouths so they are like lions, rolling and tearing at me. Our strength is gone, gone like water straight from the ground. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like melted glass. My throat is as dry as dust. And my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have left me for dead in the dust. And thanks be to God for this for singing around. And of course, you know what makes that song particularly famous, don't you? Do you? Put it in the air, mate. Yeah. My God, my God, why have you been sitting in bed? Did you hear that every Easter? So it's the psalm that Jesus quotes from. Uh, as he's on the cross, slowly dying. I'm going to do some fairly new plays. Now, we had a wonderful service with people from the deaf community, and the hymn that we're going to sing now uh, was done then, and he signed it. So, for those who were there, you might remember, might, and those who weren't there obviously won't know it, so if you can put the words <laughs> up on the screen, it's not just... <clears throat> okay, who remembers the signing for the word holy? Holy, holy. So let's see you do that. Holy, 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 right? Is, is the Lord. Then, no, I don't remember. <laughs> were they, were they, were they, is the Lord. Okay? Worthy is the Lord. Okay, and then I remember this one because I like it. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Okay, so the two is just kind of pointing. So let's do that again. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. And that's that? Yeah. Right. Oh, not, not, not. Jesus. 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 Is. The Lord. Okay. And then. Holy. 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 Is. The Lord. Good. Yeah. And the good thing about it is most of us have actually remembered most of it. So the power of signing for us who can hear as much as the deaf is it makes you think more about the words and the words that were given to me after that service is that people found it particularly moving. So I'll allow you to allow that's not the right one. Please stay seated uh, for this one because you're doing the action just to help out. But Angus, you can put up the words again and remember there's a wee bit of a quite a long intro. That's a one minute intro. One minute intro. I should put up that simple.
cheer us on a little bit. So, yeah. um, but, uh, <laughs> it's dropped off. You remember Her Majesty? Yeah. Is that a different song? Yeah. Yeah. Or Kim, this one is a different song language. <laughs> <laughs> So last Sunday we got introduced to uh, an Indonesian ceremony song by um, yeah. So we get it into our head so we can use it at other times. Not all the time, but other times we're going to do it again uh, this week. So Sunday taking over the
Seeing the one man band to this, yeah. <laughs> What's my voice? This could go. It's a good record. Right, so this is from Joel chapter 23, verses 1 to 9 and 16 to 17. Then Job replied, Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him. If only I could go to his dwelling. I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he would say to me. Would he vigorously oppose me? No, he would not press charges against me. There the upright can establish their innocence before him. There I would be delivered forever from my judge. But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I do not him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. 
Yet I am not silenced by the darkness, by the thick darkness that covers my face. And you'll see thanks be to God for the grace you're still with. A beautifully read, I like to call it Angus E. Pride. He always did talk and talk and fiction in Edinburgh, didn't he? Unlike, yeah. unlike in Glasgow. Well, oh, I'm from Glasgow, he's from Edinburgh. Edinburgh, I'm from He would say, I'm from Edinburgh, I would say, he's from Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah. Well, Thanks, Angus. Now we're at that point in the proceedings where we have another wee talk and chat, go back to the paperwork, and uh, then we'll gather for a few considerations of what we've read. <laughs> Some people can take a hint. <coughs> I guess if you punch up the reading from Mark, let's uh, read Mark's gospel, or at least part of it, Mark chapter 10 and the verses 17 through to 51. It's that well known passage about the rich young man or the rich young woman. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honour your father and your mother. You your folks hear that one? <laughs> so in the big ten, honour your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, all of these I have kept since I was a boy. And Jesus looked at him and he loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come and follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad, because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for a rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with a man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up. You have left everything to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brother or sister or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much as in the present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Amen, and thanks be to God for this is most holy word. It would be rather remiss of me if I didn't acknowledge the shock that the nation of Scotland has had within the last 24 hours with the passing 
all one Alec salmon. Regardless of what you thought of Alec as a person, he was certainly a great politician and made a mark with Scotland's politics, the likes of which might not be seen for a long time, and he leaves a vacuum. We all have our opinions, but at this time, we have to remember his family because they have lost someone who loved dearly, who was in the public eye for so long. And the one thing about Alex Salmond is, amongst all his other policies, he was quite behind the whole idea that Scotland should always, always have free education for your first degree. So when there was pushes afoot to change that and be more like south of the border, he resisted and said, no, in Scotland, all young people, or whoever indeed doing a first degree, should have it for free. And in fact, until recently, even in his wee party called Alpha, they had a five-step action plan to deal with poverty in Scotland. So we acknowledge Alec and we think of sadness that his family has today. But did you know that this Sunday is Challenge Poverty Sunday? It is, and it's been Challenge Poverty Sunday since 2012. And so I want you to consider something this morning. And it will require you to take a minute or two, because we don't have too long, to find a sheet of paper and scribble on the back the answer to this question. Okay. What is poverty? I want you to think about it. And I want you to think about it hard. What is poverty? And on the back of that, I want you to also think about are we poor? And does poverty exist in our community? Because it's a big subject, and we all think we know what we're talking about when we talk about the poor. But my question is, do we really know what we're talking about? And I'm going to be looking for suggestions. I want you to be grown up people and give opinions on what you think poverty is. Because the God whom we worship, the God whom we have revealed to us, in the Bible, the scriptures, is clearly on the side of the poor. So who are the poor? If we have any hope of making this world a better place, then we have to know who the poor are. Now, just to make you feel a bit more comfortable, there's no easy answers to this. All I want to do is create a wee bit of a discussion about poverty. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that, and then we'll have a wee bit of discussion, and then I'll sum up with a thought of you. What is poverty? Are we poor?
Chatter. So I hope we were talking about the subject in hand. Uh, and I do appreciate that not everybody likes to speak out, but I'd like you to get used to speaking out because we are one family, one family of God, and we should have each other's backs. So it shouldn't be about feeling insecure or fear of criticism or anything like that about exploring God's Word and what he said to us in relation to how we should be here in the world. So, let's kick off with a question of what you've got in terms of what you think poverty is. Yes. Yes. Right, destitution. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I sum that up for you. The young lady said not having your basic needs supplied for. So that that could be destitution as well, couldn't it? If you're destitute. Margaret. Okay, so that's an interesting take. Poverty is not just about the lack of money. Comes in other forms as well. So isolation. Any other thoughts? Nothing much. Linda. Resources, but there's a poverty of spirit under saying because there's a reluctance or barriers to that being shared with others. And then you said something. Well, no, so what's coming out there again is that there is more to poverty than the lack of finance. Tom, you want to say something? I think we'll be right home. I think we're here. We're holding. We do not know. We do not know. Okay. We have to continue to pray that the people that are rest, fortunate, and they are saved. Amen to that. Um, so, the supplementary question to what is poverty was, are we poor? No. 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 And poor and poverty aren't the same. 
I thought people aren't necessarily in poverty, but you can probably see everybody in poverty would be poor. I think that's semantics. Yes, I'm going to say. Yeah, but I mean, people, people will say that if you haven't got the money to make this iPhone, but you know, it, that's a lack of money, it's not poverty. Whereas, no, I, I there's guess, a certain level of. Yeah. That is under I think it's a good point, Steve, on I'm saying on the back of yeah. that is that the words can be interchangeable mm -hmm. and there is a certain amount of semantics in that. Um, so, we are all saying, are we, that we're not poor? Here's a question. Why is the church struggling financially? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No so that relates to what we were saying about poverty of spirit. It's not thinking about it. So the answer to the question, why are we struggling as a church financially? It's not because we're poor. It's because we are not giving enough of our wealth to the glory of God. So the message, the sub-message there is the treasurer should not be struggling week in and week out and month in and month out. We are. Now, you're right. As a church, we are not poor. None of us want for anything. So here's another sub Given that we are purveyors of the gospel, the good news, and we are not poor, do we live in a poor community? Yeah. There are people out there that are poor, yes. Yeah. Right, so let us the counsellor, how do you think we live in a poor community? recently and I went into a house and all I would say is I was weeping inside and I was praying as I was ministering to this family. I feel powerless Lord to change these people's lives. And what's even worse than that is I feel that the church by and large is acting and living in a way of powerlessness. Because we are saying that we are not poor, but we have difficulty in getting what we have where it needs to go. That's a big issue. I know that's a big issue. But we're not looking at the problem from the point of view of poverty. We are looking at it from the point of view of relative wealth. We had a situation where we had to explain to somebody that we were actually poor despite what was said by somebody else, okay? But there's no sense, even if we moan about Paying the oil firms and the gas firms a disproportionate amount of income for our heating. We're not going to freeze this winter, but some people will be near to freezing. And there are people on the streets who will die as they die every winter because what don't they have? A house above their head. And the tragedy is politicians seem to struggle to find an answer to the problem. 
And so I'm asking in a very, very small way for us to think about the problem. Because friends, I don't just think it's us who are failing to create a redistribution of wealth. The Church of Scotland is failing to create a redistribution of wealth. And I know I sound like a socialist, but I don't care because it's based on what Christ wants us to do, to reach out to those who are far less fortunate than ourselves. What was the problem for the young man in the gospel reading? Yeah, he couldn't let it go. He couldn't let it go. He was a good man. He fulfilled all the commandments. And he was pleasing to God in that respect. But Jesus cut right to the bone and touched him at that part which he had to let go of if he was to be acceptable for the kingdom of heaven. And he said, you're right, you've done all these good things, don't give your money away. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. And here's a thought. Is this not part of the problem that we have in our Western society? You remember the statistic from last week of what percentage of the world uses 40% of the world's resources? <coughs> well, remember. And we are the 1%. We are the 1%. I can't read my Bible as a Christian. And come away from it with a report card from the Almighty saying, guess what? Could do better. So I want you to think about that. Regardless of your political leanings, because that political leaning is about what you believe is the way you can at least start to go about solving the problem. So regardless of your political leanings, why in the West are we having such a big problem with our resources and our planet? And in the 21st century, we run, or in conjunction with the food bank, we have to make sure that people in Carbon Den can put food on their plates What's wrong? We have people in our community who don't have a penny. And they don't always have the state benefits that people go on about. Believe you me, I work for CAB for a volunteer for a good number of years. And you can't have the waste of resources of God, you know. People who are doing, you always see them smoking, they've always got the lights telly and all the rest of that. But I can assure you from my experience in town, most people would rather be in a job and self sufficient than rely on. There are the But from the statistics that the town collects, most of these malingerers are very much in the minority. So I want you to think about the rich young ruler and how difficult it is for him to let go of his wealth. I want you to think about we are all not poor. And notice I said not poor, because not being poor doesn't necessarily mean you are wealthy. And we all know that Jeff Bezos, likes on and Elon Musk are the richest men in the world. And compared to the rest of us, it's gone. Not a big nation in America. Very, 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 
Vi kan se det er dårlig. Det er And that's to do with inequality, isn't it? So let me sum up by saying and answering the question from my point of view, what is poverty? In material terms at least, poverty is lack of choice. Some people don't even get a good start in life. And you see it going from generation to generation to generation. And it's these kind of people that Jesus Christ wants us to reach. So after our time today together, which I've enjoyed, I hope you leave here at least thinking more about the problem. We shouldn't have poverty in Garden Den. We shouldn't. But we do. The politicians don't seem to be doing much. So the question is, as the Church of Jesus Christ do something. We're not going to solve all the world's problems. Let's think positively about what we can do because God is on the side of those who are disenfranchised and in poverty. I don't know, I'm very sharp. <laughs> So with these thoughts in our minds, I want us to sing a song that we've sung before a few times, and it's called Beauty. <laughs>
Thanks. I think one of the reasons that make some of the problems that we have in our society so intractable these days no longer live in a Christian country. So all the things that many of us were brought up to do and ways to live, it's no longer the case for younger generations. They have totally lost touch with Christianity and the idea of God. And I'm afraid that we live in a, an increasingly selfish and self-centered society. And I say that not just as a preacher, but I say that having brought up a couple of generations of younger people now. They do not see the world the way we see it. And it's hard to get them to see what Christianity fits into their world view. John Knox was quite character. He was a firebrand preacher. Some people would say he was absolutely miserable and introduced this death pure Presbyterianism that we're trying to shake off in the 21st century. But one thing that John Knox said that always impressed me, and he believed it, and he said this, give me Scotland or I die. And I want Scotland to be a Christian nation again. I can't say that the way Knox said it because I'm in my way out. I'm in my 60s. I'm not the young 30-year-old preacher who started out in the Church of Scotland. But over the last 40 years or so, I've watched the church go into decline and I've watched this nation go into decline. And many of the things that we think matter, love, community, self Friends. Friends. All of that eroding. And I'm asking you guys, I haven't counted you this morning, I'll work that out later, but there's enough of us here to make a difference in our community. There is enough of us to make a difference if we believe it. And I'm asking you to believe it as we pray. Let's pray. Father, we've highlighted the troubles of this world. We've highlighted the troubles in our community. And we ask you, Lord, to give us strength and to give us vision and hope to make a difference in a world that seems increasingly hopeless. We can't do it on our own strength. We need your spirit to help us do what you would have us do. We give thanks that you've been with us this morning, that you have moved amongst us, that you have touched us, and Lord, dare we say, changed us ever so slightly. And so as we remember our world, as we remember Alex Salmon's family and all those who've lost their loved ones at this time, we ask that you be with them as you are with us. And we gather ourselves as a one people, saying as a one people that prayer which Jesus taught us to say. Our oh, Father, right in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I know we're over time, so don't go moaning at me, because it's no worse than to move the side for it, have my tea and coffee afterwards. I'll not keep you back any longer than you need to be. But we'll have one more hymn to sing, and it's a new one. So if uh, our musicians would help lead this, and it's uh, remember last week I introduced us to the Church of Scotland supplementary. So we're taking another song out of the supplementary. Room.
and it's called the, ga the Garden of the World. So we'll hear the tune and then we'll, we'll try singing it. Like Hopefully by the time you get to the front door. 